All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Tuesday, March 10th. And another day of uh, thrills in the stock market today. Uh, I guess today you would probably classify it as more as th as thrills, but definitely a, another roller coaster day. Uh, we had this price action today where we started uh, pretty strong. Um, we basically went to unched. I think uh, IWM, small, the small cap ETF, was down about uh, one percent, and then finished up three percent. So. Uh, this is the process, right? I think that this is the process of, um, I don't know if I would call it yet putting in a putting in a bottom, but um, this back and forth price action is typically, I think, what you see once you have this volatility pick up like this. It's not, it, normally, I, I don't think that a lot of these things are V-shaped recoveries. I think those are, those are rare. I think it's more along the lines of, testing the upper and, and lower limits of things before you actually like pick a direction and, and decide which way to go. So let's let's talk a little bit about uh, some of the observations for the day because I think there's a number of them. Uh, so where did we finish? We finished up, SPY finished up over 5% for the day, again, which is alarming considering where we were uh, just a few hours ago. The Qs finished up 54 five percent for the day uh, you could see these are all increases after the open uh, the diamonds finished up 4.8 percent again the uh, the small caps continue to lag uh, you know banks the regional banks we continue to see a lot of option activity in the kre etf on the downside a lot of puts i mean heavy heavy puts that we're seeing and and also on the tape in total um, I just think that there's a lot more puts. I don't know. Sometimes this is also uh, could mark kind of the, the tail end of some of the volatility is when everybody is buying puts like when it's too late, um, which I think could be what they've what they're doing here. Um, that's a that's a big option trade. This just went up 10 minutes before the close. April 39, 34 puts. Uh, it's a five dollar wide put spread, but I mean you could see all the activity today in KRE. I mean this has been going on now for a couple of days where there there's been just a lot of a lot of puts. Uh, this was at 10:44. Those were the April 27s that they were buying out of the money for 90 cents. You know maybe they're rolling some of these, although this doesn't even have open interest to it. So you know. Not not sure what they're doing there. Maybe they're selling those and buying the you know as a premium play, and they're buying the um, April twenty sevens. It's it's difficult to to piece these these trades together, but um, the majority of them are going up on the put side. And again, I think overall uh, we're still seeing a lot of you know those types of hedge trades or, or speculation. I don't know, but it seems like. Um, some some a lot more put trades right i think the put call ratio is still elevated to today uh the vix i think important today as well as bonds um the bonds finished down we'll look at these before we go we before we talk about uh the equities because i think this stuff is really interesting and it's giving you some signals i mean this thing hit a high of 179 the other day i mean we're down 17 points in the tlt i mean these are it's just humongous moves. Um, we're we're about halfway through this uh, this gap. It looks like, but I mean, right? Just focus in on this. Focus. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So maybe this comes in and, and fills the gap. This this was holding up at at one point today. The TLT. Um, you could see I was actually playing this a little bit and, and scalping very quickly. Uh, with T with TLT, but you could see right around 11:30, basically straight down, and we've been seeing these swings, right? I mean, that's not something new over the last like three or four days, where we do one of these, and then all of a sudden something changes, and it's not even like a little bit of, you know, I guess maybe a little bit of digestion, but it just picks another direction and goes. Um, so again, I'll come back to, uh, we'll talk about the price action and the S&P and so forth. But let's look at the VIX too. Um, you know, I think this is also, so we've got a couple things going on. Remember I said in yesterday's video that I, I just didn't see a lot that I liked on the tape. 
part of that, I think, because, you know, there was a big MOC sell imbalance yesterday because of that, the, the gamma move needs to be done. I think if that wasn't the case, possibly we would have, we wouldn't have closed on the lows, but it is what it is with the market mechanics uh, right now. Uh, the one thing that I did say at the, uh, in the video was that the TLT provided a little bit of, you know, like a divergence for the day, but that was basically it. Um, the VIX, believe it or not, it was just an inside day. So we need to, like, you know, need more time, I think. You know, good to see this drop below 50, uh, but still, it's still holding the short-term moving average. Again, I have the five on here. So, again, I, I don't think that you could really draw too many conclusions from the day. You got a, you got a bounce day with a whole bunch of shake and bake in, in the middle of it. But, um, uh, you know, we could look, we could dig through some of these sectors too, but amazing the, the energy move. I spent some time talking about energy yesterday, but um, look at this ETF is up 21% today, but sold off. You know, uh, this thing also was all over the place today too. So let's, let's go, let's just, let's jump right to the indices. Uh, so one of the things as I'm going through the technicals, which we'll start with the weekly, one of the things that, of course, you know, we're hearing about more and more cases uh, in, in the in the U.S. of the of the coronavirus, but but the market seems to be handling it decently. And trust me, I have Bloomberg Terminal, and I have Bloomberg Squawk in my ear, and they're literally like rapid fire talking about this state and that state. And I mean, the headlines are pretty. Uh, you know, they talked about this particular one, that the National Guard is in um, New Rochelle. Like, the market kind of shrugged that off. I was waiting for the for the bottom to fall out on that kind of thing. And, um, you know, so it could be a couple things, right? It's maybe a little bit of saturation, and the market is pricing it in. Um, it could also be that the market, you know, the market is leading, is a leading indicator. So maybe the market has already adjusted to this information. It's already priced in right the the rumor um and now you get some of the news that's coming out and the market's not moving too much or it could also be because the the market was fixated on stimulus that's going to be uh that is going to be uh you know there's going to be some type of program in the u.s we also heard about italy um that's going to be doing something as well as germany so you got a bunch of things going on and it's difficult when you've got that many moving parts uh, the, the best thing I think to do is watch the price action. I was saying earlier too, I almost wish that I didn't have uh, Bloomberg squawk on days like this and I'm just, um, you know, just reacting to the price because sometimes you get shaken out uh, because you hear certain things. But so let's, so that being said, right, with a lot of things on the tape and we don't really know uh, which is the driving factor in that. Um, I also want to talk about credit spreads too. That's the last thing, and then we'll talk about the price, the price action. But again, credit spreads, as much as like the, the this is getting attention because they have widened decently from those low 2019 levels, 2000 beginning of 2020 levels, but they are still not flashing major concern yet. We are over this 2000 late, uh, you know, end of the year 2008. Eight, but we're not even close to 2015, 2016. So that's something that you'll have to keep an eye on. The more that that, that this goes up, you know, the more that I think uh, I particularly have to be, you know, conservative um, when the fixed when there's stress in the fixed income market. We do not want to see that, you know, unless you're playing this market really heavy to the short side. And again, you know, look at the peak in 2008. We're, as much as people are comparing this to 2008, it's that's in terms of credit wise, not even in the same ballpark right now. Um, and again, just to um, dial into the, to today's price action, you could see this came off uh, decently. All right, so now we'll, we'll talk about, let's talk about the weekly chart first. The level that I've mentioned now a couple times in S&P futures is 2774. If you want a SPY level, I know some people like to look at SPY, um, that level bottom of value that we need to hold by the end of the week is 276.20. So we're now 12 bucks from that. Let's go back to the S&P futures. So again, that's 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 my line in the sand. Um, we talked about how the 80% rule is now complete, right? So that's done. That was one of the things that I was you know worried about at the end of last week. So that's done. 
Um, and now we just basically, you know, have to, uh, you know, look at some smaller time frames for. So it's very difficult if you look at the daily. I still don't think there's really much t to really hang your hat on here. Um, we're below all the short-term moving averages, so there's there's really just not much to take away yet from that. The one hour, you know, so for for resistance that um, we talked about in the pre-market session, you know, that's going to be up at 29.67 for the week, right? This is the one hour chart and that's the bottom of value. So um, again, it doesn't mean, you know, this is still a significant gap that you could basically try to, you know, try to trade um, before we hit, you know, so that's where I think the bounce could get to this week. Um, that would be probably right around here, right? And, and, then, and then we don't know what's gonna really happen from there. We're kind of, uh, I think, taking this one day at a time. Uh, for you know, I manage two different accounts. I manage a long term, longer term account, um, as well as I manage a trading account. So, trading account, taking this one day at a time right now. Um, I did add a little bit to the TTG tactical portfolio yesterday. Um, I did not do anything with that today. Uh, so that's the levels there. And again, what I've talked about a lot is is that Nasdaq. You know, we'll we'll bring up the cues here. Um, NASDAQ, again, I think is a lot cleaner. It's still holding the uptrend. It tested that, that top of value yesterday and is now back above. So the level here is 190. Again, it's amazing how far down this is, but uh, this is just how fast we're moving. 195.61. So as long as we hold that by the end of the week, the uptrend in NASDAQ is still intact. Daily, I'm just going to get a sip of water here. Really nice uh, v VPOC takeout. Interesting that, that we had a return here. Notice this, I forgot if I mentioned this yesterday, but this candle here came so close to taking it out and it left it there probably for a reason. Um, so that's been taken out and fulfilled to the downside and we're back above the 200. And if you don't want to use that level that I mentioned on the weekly chart, you can just use the 200 day moving average. So again, I think it's a lot cleaner in the queues. Um, you know the note that I sent was here yesterday. Do, 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 do. No, it's not letting me open that. But anyway, that's the note that um, why I've been playing the cues a lot more. I think they're just a lot easier. Too many things going on. Um, in S and P, and and it's a noisier chart. Um, also, you've got a shorter distance at this point to get up to bottom of value two hundred eight, which is about five handles away. And on the five minute, we did make it through. We actually touched that venom, which is my target. Which wow, we actually got to that. I was trading some cues at the end of the day. And that was my that was my target, but I we must have tagged that right in the last minute, maybe? No, oh, five minutes. How did I not get that target? In the queues. Um, long two oh one, I got uh, two oh three eighty. Maybe I just wanted to cut it off before then. But yeah, there's a there's a tiny bit of uh, there's a little bit of April two ninety calls. The April Apple uh, Apple April options call options were active today, so I participated in them today. But it is really tough trading options. I mean, these were like about a 40, 40, 45 delta, and the stock moved five dollars, and I was only able to make a dollar on the option from my point of entry. So, you know, that's because of when the VIX is going down, you're you're basically swimming against the tide. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, this was a small trade too. This is all I did because I know it's too difficult. Right? This was at twelve fifteen. So again, uh, you know, really toning down my position size. Twelve fifteen was was like right in here. Right. So I took that target. This was when this was at two seventy seven. I took that target at like two eighty two. It's five dollar move. You would think, oh wow crush the option. Option appreciated $1. 
Uh, and then I got out of that last piece at the end of the day. But that's just too much. I mean, the risk to reward is that's horrible. And I didn't want to hold, I'm not holding a four, $14 option that's a month and change away, short term option. It's crazy. So, yeah, those are my trades for the day. Again, mainly just scalping and getting uh, whipsawed like crazy. Um, JD, where did JD finish on the day? Finished, I think, fine. I got stopped out of that one, even though it, it on the five minute it actually held. But I'm being really uh, tight with my stops here. So you could leave JD for tomorrow. It did not get in. The whole thing was I saw this thing go into value. So again, if it doesn't do what I want it to do, the whole thesis, I get out of it. Because I'm looking at this point when I bought this on the first bar and it actually got halfway, uh, or sorry, about a quarter of the way through, right? My first target was up here, which is maybe a little bit too far away. But that's that was my whole thesis. And if it's not back inside value, then there's no reason for me to have that trade on. I'm not going to make up another reason, um, but in any event, that's that. Also, I tried trading Netflix. <laughs> it's just difficult. Uh, I, I basically stopped out of this. It didn't actually hit my stop. Again, I'm just being really quick, and maybe I'm just hearing too much on the tape, but I think this break back into value shook me out, and then, of course, that happened. All right, I think that was around there, 1420. Yeah, right here. On this. <laughs> and then it turned around. I, you know, and I had an alert and I looked at it to say, hey, do I want to re re enter this? And like, it's been such a pain in the neck all day long. But uh, it would have worked. And, and Netflix, by the way, it does. You know, I spent some time talking about Netflix like last week because um, it still has a chance to get above value. You know, maybe not the, you know, who knows this week, but maybe next week. It's it. I think it's still around for a chance. It closed inside value for the day. So maybe one to watch for tomorrow. We'll see. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Again, the price action, are crazy. Um, by the way, look at the, uh, this is as far as we went, by the way, hammer bar right on the bottom of value. The real nice signal there. All kinds of back and forth to shake people out before the third time this thing took off at the end of the day. I mean, again, crazy swings uh, throughout the day. So last thing I'll say is, you know, if, if you are making it through this and, and you're hanging in there, um, if you've made some money, congratulations to you. But if not, if you are, you know, hanging in there through this volatility, uh, you know, give yourself a pat on the back. This is not easy stuff. So um, there's just a, what makes this harder. You know, I was saying in the pre-market session this morning that, um, you know, of course, I traded through 2007 to 2009, all that stuff for, and further on. But thank goodness there was no Twitter uh, then. That This is all distractions. Uh, you know, there's some really good information, too, that people put out. But there's also just, you know, I put out a couple things. You know, I try to post some things on Twitter. And just people come at me, like, all day long, like, with their political viewpoints and stuff. I mean, it's just nonsense. So, um, so you know, hang in there. Take a deep breath at the end of these days. You know, try to get some exercise in. Try to get some time away from the screens. That's actually more, I think, important than doing over analysis right now, considering that so many stocks are correlated together right now. They're moving um, together. A lot of charts look very similar. Um, you need the VIX to kind of get back below 30 uh, before correlations start to separate and single stocks um, will tend to fluctuate away from themselves. But you've got so many different names that are kind of just moving together right now. So hang in there. Give yourself some credit for this week and last week. And, um, and we'll move on. Power through to tomorrow. Have a great night, everybody. See you tomorrow.